Okay, great. Well, you're here now. Thanks. Um, we will go ahead and get started then. I will convene the April 1st, 2021 Zoning Hearing Officer meeting, and I'm Lisa Grote. I'm the Zoning Hearing Officer for San Mateo County. And before we get into today's one item, uh, I will ask Deb Robinson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance because we do start every meeting with the pledge. So, Deb? Deb, can you hear me? I don't think Deb can hear me. Uh, Janeth, can you uh, engage um, Deb's uh, ability to hear? She's on, she's not muted, she's off mute. Um, what we could do is, uh, I have a, a, um, a PowerPoint of the flag. If you wanted to do that, we can just put it on and- um, Okay, okay. Just and, and then we can start from there and we can work on um, Deb getting okay. her. And uh, should I just lead the pledge then? Yeah, but hold okay. on, let me put it up on the screen. Okay, I, she is talking. Okay, all right. Thanks, Janet. I uh -huh. pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Now we do have an opportunity for oral communications. So if there is someone here who would like to speak to an item not on the agenda, now would be the time to indicate that. And Janeth, can you confirm if anyone has their hand raised? I don't see anyone's hand raised. Um, I do see Ann Courtlander with her hand raised. Okay. Um, um, Ms. Courtlander, do you have um, comments on an item not on the agenda? Okay. If we could unmute her, that'd be mm -hmm. great. Thanks. There. Am I? Am I? You are. You're unmuted. Yes. Oh, perfect. No, I have uh, comments on this agenda item. I misunderstood you. Oh, okay, great. Well, we will be getting there in just a couple minutes. So we'll okay, call fine. on you then. So okay. uh, should I mute? I'll mute myself again. That would be great. That'd be okay. great. Thanks. Yeah, I think there's some technical difficulties with Deb's machine. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't see anyone who wants to uh, speak to oral communications. So I am going to go right into item number one, and that's owner applicant Eric Wood. It's file number PLN 2020-00311. It's location 573 Menlo Oaks Drive, Menlo Oaks, and it's assessor's parcel number 062140160. And this has been continued um, from our March 4th meeting of 2021. So Brian Albini has been the project planner and Brian, I think is gonna start with a brief overview. Thanks. Hi, good, good morning all. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yes, I can. The Great. Um, so uh, yes, the, uh, the continuance of the item that was heard at the February 4th ZHO meeting um, and the applicants had asked for a continuance to propose an alternative design. And that's uh, what we'll be considering today. Uh, with today's uh, presentation. Um, the um, dimensions of the project haven't changed. It's only been relocated. Um, and again, it's uh, just to give a brief summary, it's a secure bike shed um, in conjunction with a freestanding carport in the front half of a single family residentially zoned parcel in the unincorporated community of Menlo Oaks. As you can see here, um, this is the uh, neighborhood context. Um, the um, carport is highlighted in white and is seen by the large oak tree in the front portion of the house. Um, the intent of the applicant is to relocate it behind that existing carport. This is the revised site plan. The area shaded in pink was the Location of the original carport that was considered at the February 4th meeting. The relocation highlighted in green is now 66 feet away from the front property line, five feet uh, from the side left side property line, 
um, in line with the existing carport and 25 feet from the neighboring property line um, on the opposite side and 62 feet um, from the residence. Um, this is just a recap of the existing nonconformities and the continued nonconformities that would occur with the approval of the bike storage um, structure. Again, this is the existing conditions on the site. As you can see, it's a freeze open air carport with electrical charging station. The original uh, proposal um, was for the carport uh, to be on the right side of the carport, uh, for the bicycle storage man, the right side of the carport and was present with a lot of opposition from the community. They've subsequently relocated it behind the carport so that um, it doesn't seem as obtrusive and more proportional um, to the community and also allowing um, for that partial secure views um, so that they have some private areas in the front lawn um, that they were hoping to achieve. Again, this was just the same site plan that was considered. It's just going to be relocated. Um, environmental review is exempt. Um, it's 15303 um, class three exemption. Um, and finally, recommending approval for the revised design um, in light of the efforts made by the applicant um, to respond to community input and relocate the structure, but also um, recognizing their need to have a secure storage facility for their um, bicycle equipment. And that concludes uh, my presentation. I'm happy to, to provide uh, answer any questions from uh, zoning hearing officer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brian. Thanks very much. Um, do the applicants, Mr. and Mrs. Woods, have anything they would like to add uh, or say about the application? Um, no, just just that um, you know we considered what uh, the feedback was last time. We we adjusted our plans to make sure that we accommodated those those comments, and uh, um, hopefully that uh, will not you know, rub anyone the wrong way. Uh, we did uh, reach out to all of our adjoining neighbors, um, um, Scott included, and just went through the new plan with them. Um, no one had any objections. And I think some of them offered to write in something that said, you know, they were they were totally happy with it and, and didn't have any concerns. So we hope that this will, uh, will be something that can go through. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Lisa, I, to, to add, uh, there were there were in total nine letters of support uh, for the project, uh, eight of which were posted online. One was received uh, this morning. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that, Brian, because I was also going to mention that, and I have received and read all of those letters, and I will read the names of the writers of the letters into the public record after we're done with um, some of the public testimony of people who are here at this hearing. Um, I won't read all of the letters into the record because it, some of them are a little lengthy, but I will read the names because I did receive all those letters of support. So thanks for mentioning that. And I just wanted to say really briefly that it's every single neighbor in our immediate vicinity, um, other than Scott, who's here, I'll let him speak for himself. I, I think he's happier with this version, um, but it's all of our next door neighbors, across neighbors, the flag lot behind us, um, everyone who surrounds us wrote in support, so. Okay, great, great, thank you. Thanks for adding that. Okay, I think we will get into public comment now. I will open the public hearing. And Janeth, I am going to need to ask you to um, read the directions. I am receiving some messages from Deb that she is somehow on permanently mute. And so if you wouldn't mind reading the uh, instructions on how panelists can, um, or attendees, I'm sorry, how attendees can, um, indicate they'd like to speak. Sure. Thanks. So for those attending the meeting on the Zoom video conference, we will use the raised hand feature in order to organize any public comments. During the general public comment period and for items on the regular agenda, I will ask those members of the public who wish to comment to click the raised hand feature to raise and unraise your hand. For those joining by telephone, can press star nine to indicate your desire to speak. 
when you hear your name called, it will promptly ask to unmute your account and you may begin speaking. So right now for this item, um, we did have Ann Courtlander. So Ms. Courtlander, please unmute your mic and begin speaking. There, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, oh, we terrific. Can. Hey, um, thank you very much. Um, as you know, I was at the last meeting and because I only received this yesterday, this uh, document and only looked at it late last night, I was unable to uh, write a letter. So that's why I'm here. And um, so I, I, maybe these are questions more than anything else, but um, in the conditions of approval, I didn't see anything added about removing the existing box, the plywood con uh, structure. And I assume that as this project is now going to focus on the other side behind the carport, that that box will be removed. But since it's been there for so long, I just wanted to make sure that part of the project is now to remove that box. So that was my first comment and or question. Okay. And if anyone has an answer to that, you can tell me right now or we can wait till I'm finished. Yeah, I'd be happy I, to answer that. Oh, oh, okay, Brian, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, typically conditions of approval are for um, legalized structures that require um, a discretionary permit because that structure was initially built without permits, it couldn't remain. And it's my understanding, and I'm sure the property owners can attest to it, that that structure will come down upon the issuance of the building permit should an approval be granted today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Seems like a strange way to do it, but that's okay. So then uh, my second comment and or question is that in attachment C, page three, which is the, uh, uh, the view from above of the site plan, the illustration shows a six foot fence where the non-compliant accessory building is today. And of course, that is not permitted under our zoning regulations, only a four foot fence and or hedge is allowed there. So I just didn't want to have this approved and have the woods think that their six foot fence was being approved also. I mean, it's hard to tell from looking at that illustration, but it sure looked like a six foot fence. And so I just want to be on record that I don't believe that that is permitted. And certainly from my perspective, um, it's not what would be there. Um, so, um, and, and I think we actually went into that at the last meeting, but I just wanted to make sure that that was not included in the approval process for this particular moving the accessory dwelling, uh, accessory building to the other side. And lastly, I just want to say that I have no objection to where the woods have now decided to place their bicycle um, uh, building. And I think it's a fine solution to the issue. So that part of it, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Um, Brian, could you speak a little bit to the six foot fence question? I know we did talk about it a little bit at our last hearing in February, but I'm not seeing that on attachment C. Maybe I'm just missing it, but could you? It, it, it could have maybe not come through in the printing, but I'll, I'll, I'll clarify that. Um, th that. That what appeared to be a six foot fence was merely just for a diagramming purpose to designate where the edge of the property line was. Um, there is the approval of the use permit does not allow for an overheight fence in the areas that it would otherwise not be allowed. That was not part of the original proposal. Just to remind about what the fence height requirements are, um, the uh, front 40 feet uh, um, along the side perimeter and the front property line are to be four feet maximum. And the perimeter fencing from 40 feet to the rear of the 
um, around the entire rest of the property is allowed to be six feet. So six feet would be allowed up and to where the carport um, to, to the front of the carport because the, the carport is at 43 feet. On from, the side, on from, the side. On the side, correct. Yes, but the, I, I guess what my point is, the illustration appears to show that there is then a six foot fence that joins that side fence across to the edge of the carport. And all that I'm- was, all Right, I'm that wasn't part of the proposal. Was, that's a separate, that's a completely separate issue. It's not being approved as part of this accessory building. No, not at all. The, what, the, the, the illustration you see on your screen now is what the Woods are proposing as part of their redesign of, of, of the carport location. And that's the extent of their project proposal. Okay, okay. Um, Brian, in response to that, under condition one, would it make sense just to add a sentence that says this approval does not include fences? Um, those would be reviewed separately. I think that I think that'll be fair. Uh, okay. It'll be similar to the, um, our our tree removal language and the conditions of approval that this doesn't constitute the removal of any trees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds Lisa, good. I wanted to point out that I have Scott Barron with his hand raised to speak on this item as well. Thank you, Jana. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's move on to Mr. Barron and then we can circle back to any other comments that we need to um, as part of our discussion. But Mr. Barron, please make your comments. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Eric and Danielle for modifying the plan. Um, you know, the new location addresses all of my previous concerns. And I just have one comment for consideration, which is that just trying to think really long term, if the woods were to sell the house and the new owner wanted to enclose the garage, um, if that were to happen, it seems like it kind of obviates the need for the shed. And uh, since the garage and the shed are sort of adjacent to each other, it would sort of result in a roundabout way of achieving a larger than allowed garage. So if possible, I would just propose that if, if a limitation can be placed somewhere in the, in the paperwork that basically says if the garage is enclosed that the, pri that the shed would be removed, then that would seem, that would address all my concerns. Okay, um, Brian, um, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think use permits as well as other discretionary permits run with the land, not with the owners. So we would not be conditioning this to be removed if um, either they sell the property or if the garage is enclosed, either by um, the woods or or any previous or uh, sorry subsequent owners. Is that correct? That, that's correct. As it as it stands, the the carport um, can can be enclosed at any time with the ministerial building permit. Right, right. And my understanding too is that the carport is not quite as big as a regular garage, is it? Is it 20 by 20 or is it slightly Correct. small? It's smaller than that, which is part of the um, concern about enclosing it in the first place was that it wouldn't provide enough room for typical storage of things that you might put in your garage. That was my recollection of our previous discussion. That, and that's my understanding of the design intent by the, okay. by the architect was to have a more modern freestanding design. Okay, okay. Is, so, is 20 yeah. by, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Barron. Is 20 by 20, isn't that a normal garage size? Uh, 20 by 20 is a normal, it, it's a typical uh, garage size. Some are larger um, for storage purposes. I think 20 by 20 is considered kind of a typical two car garage. Um, but my understanding is that this is a little bit smaller than that. Is that correct? I don't, uh, the, the Woods or Brian can speak to that. I'll just I'll just clarify just kind of our on our parking requirements and kind of yeah. what those spaces really mean. Um, um, a twenty by twenty garage accommodates two nine by nineteen spaces. That doesn't leave any room to move around um, or or storage. So it's just two 
uh, it's two spaces um, essentially. Yeah. Okay. And so it's not atypical to find people um, applying for or when they're building their houses, whether they have to apply for special permission or not, to have slightly larger than 20 by 20 garages because they are trying to accommodate storage. I mean, would you say that's a, a fair uh, statement, Brian, that it's not atypical to have a larger than 20 by 20 garage? Right, um, just yeah. what, what's being built now is, 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 is typically larger. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, and, and given the fact that we are considering making the findings that this is a legitimate um, and um, structure on its own, I would not uh, be adding a condition that it be removed should either the woods um, enclose the, the carport or a future owner enclose the carport. Because I think what we're saying here is that this is a a justifiable, a, a legitimate structure in and of itself in this location. So that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I'm afraid. Yeah, I would. Mr. Barron, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I just I think in my perspective, what I was just trying to protect against is you know if somebody had come and just app asked for an approval or a deviation in order to increase the garage from 400 to 500 square feet would, would be acceptable. And, and I think somebody could achieve that with this sort of roundabout way. And that was what I was trying to protect for, but it's a very, it's a low, kind of a low priority. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I do think that in another instance, or even in this instance, maybe originally a larger garage could have been requested it would have needed a, a use permit um, but it could have been requested in this location um, and then the findings would have been evaluated at that time the situation would have been evaluated to see if the findings could be made um, so I don't think this is out of line or out of character with what could have been requested to begin with um, and again frequently people do either request or just put into their designs uh, bigger than 400 foot garages. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, I appreciate uh, the clarification, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your comments. Um, Brian, did you have anything you wanted to add to any of this? Uh, no, ju just that um, I, I think the, the design is a reflect uh, I, I think reflects the fact that that the woods uh, were, were trying to design their house and the subsequent carport in a respectful manner to the neighborhood and that this bicycle storage rose out of a need for security more than anything else and that they had never anticipated the need to have this kind of storage structure and had had it been part of, of their original design considerations, I'm sure they would have included it um, when they asked for the use permit for the carport. Um, the carport has no requirement to be for, um, have all four sides um, open walls. Um, so it, it would have been, um, in, by my estimation, entirely acceptable um, to have included it in their original use permit proposal in 2016. Um, and, and I, I don't believe it would um, be an issue um, moving forward. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks very much. Are there any other um, comments or uh, members of the public that would like um, to comment? I, there aren't any, but I do see um, Ms. Cortlander with her hand raised one more time. Okay, that would be fine. Great, Ms. Cortlander. So Scott raised an interesting point because um, in San Mateo County, are carports and enclosed garages essentially the same thing? Um, they serve the same purpose for covered parking. There is, um, and I'll let Brian go into a little more detail, but there is a public, or sorry, a covered parking requirement and you can meet that through either a carport 
or a garage for single family homes. Um, so in that respect, there's, they're, they're meeting the same goal. Um, clearly there's a different design um, between a carport and a garage. But so, well, why I'm asking is, would it be permissible to simply enclose that carport and it wouldn't need any sort of permit? Okay, um, Brian, can you answer that question? Um, I know it would need a building permit, but are you aware of whether they would have to come back for a use permit to enclose the carport? Uh-oh. Um, Thank you, Brian, can, oh, yeah. can I be heard okay? Sorry about that. Yes, yes, um, yes, you were muted, sorry about that, but yes, you are unmuted now. So if, if, there, isn't a, if there is a scenario um, where um, Eric and Danielle decided to abandon this idea altogether and wanted to enclose the carport, they could. The practical um, issues are this was a freestanding carport that was not designed nor engineered to accommodate a full enclosure nor to hang um, a, 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 garage, you know, a garage door that would roll up. It wouldn't have that clearance. This was designed as, as simply to meet, as, as you said before, the, the parking requirements for single family residents to have two covered parking spaces. The, the, zoning res, uh, the, the zoning regulations don't make a distinction between carports and garages. However, there is a, an occupancy and, and, and building standard and, and inspection distinction between those two types of structures because they have different um, fire ratings and efficiency ratings in, in how they're constructed. Um, but for all intents and purposes, yes, someone could apply to enclose the carport. Okay, now would that um, enclosure, it, yes, it would require a building permit because there are different building standards, but would it require some revision to the existing use permit um, to enclose it? No, it wouldn't because okay. Uh, okay. The, the initial carport was, was, was legalized and it's a legal structure and merely enclosing it is, is not a discretionary decision. Okay, okay. So that hopefully answers uh, your question, Ms. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, is there any other public comment Okay. Um, that is all, that is all I have. Okay, thank you, Janet. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Woods, would you have any addition, um, additional comments or responses to any of the comments that have been raised so far? Um, no, um, okay. none. Okay, thank you. Then I'm gonna just go ahead and read the names of the um, neighbors who did write letters of support in, um, uh, wrote them into us. And I'm not gonna read each of the letters into the file because they do, uh, some of them are a little bit long, but I'll read the names. Beth and Neil Bletcherman, Roland Acra, Richard Gordon and Dennis McShane, Stacy Lim, Tarun and Laura Batten Battengar, Celeste Baranski, Sandy and Peter Hers, Deborah Schaefer, and Tashi Ganpo. So again, those were all letters of support. So um, in addition to the, the support we received from the two commenters uh, this morning, as well as their questions, um, in the absence of any further comment, I am going to say that I do think this redesign um, addresses the concerns that were raised previously. It addresses um, the impact on the immediate neighbor, and it also uh, addresses the proportionality question we raised last time. It doesn't add more width, it uses a, an established dimension. Um, behind the existing carport. So it's not adding more width on a very narrow site. And it 
also addresses that impact on the street um, or from the street view. So I do think this resolves those concerns that were raised previously. And um, I'm prepared to issue a written approval in accordance with the findings and conditions in the staff report. Um, I did want to just ask the Woods if you've had a chance to read through those conditions of approval and you understand them. If you have any questions, we can talk about those. Uh, no, we didn't have any questions, but um, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that um, to uh, that either um, you know lent lent their support to this or uh, considered um, our uh, our case. So I appreciate that. Great, and I I did want to say a special thank you to both um, of the Woods, Mr. and Mrs. Woods, and to Brian for um, going the extra mile and really responding to your neighbors' concerns, and also um, taking the revised plan around uh, to your neighbors and showing them. I really do appreciate that. So thank you. All right, and yeah, thanks thanks to Brian too. Yes, yeah, thank you, Brian. He was very helpful in helping us come up with a solution that would be appropriate. Great, great. Okay, well, and thank you to the neighbors too and to those who attended today's meeting. Um, I will close the public hearing and we'll be issuing a written approval, uh, again, in accordance with the findings and conditions in the staff report. There will be a very minor um, addition to condition one that says the approval does not include um, any fencing on the site and that would be reviewed separately. And then, um, I believe we are concluded, we are done. There is an appeal period, I'm sorry. There is an appeal period of 10 working days, April 15th, 2021 is when that appeal period would expire. There is a $616.35 appeal fee. The appeal does need to be in writing and submitted to the planning and building department. But after that appeal period expires, should there not be an appeal, um, you can get your building permits and get started on your project. Okay, great. And if there are any rules with fencing that just so we don't make a mistake again, if you could just include what the rules are, um, that would be very appreciated. Okay, I am going to- I'll be happy yeah. to include that. Okay, uh, great. thank you, Brian. Perfect. Okay, thanks, Brian. Okay, well, I think we are finished with today's hearing, so I will close the public hearing and we are finished with the April 1st, 2021 zoning hearing officer meeting. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Janet. Sorry, Lisa. Yeah, I'm, on my old, I'm on my old computer right now. Okay. Take oh, care. you're back, Dev. Yeah, I'm on the, I've been back. I'm on the old one. I, a glitch with the new one, I guess. It all worked out. It all worked out. I, I appreciate your backup, Janet. Really, I do. Okay, no problem, of course. And, and I'm, I'm going to figure out what's going on with this new one. It just shut up. I mean, the volume, the, the audio just stopped out of nowhere. I didn't yeah, touch it. Take a, take a look at some, you know, maybe ISD. Yeah, I sent a, a ticket. Sent a, no, I actually sent an email to Kenneth because he just got, I just got it yesterday. So I don't know if he wants me to put in a ticket or what. But um, yeah, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look at it with you, Deb. Thanks. We can. I restarted it. it and it looked like it was going to work, but I was afraid it was going to echo. So I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sure you guys will figure it out. If not, I have, I'm glad I still have my old one. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Thanks. guys. Have a good day. Thank All right. You. Bye. Good luck tonight. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You done?